Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya With very sweet songs all the gopis dance totally satisfied with Radha and Krishna the treasure of their life. In this way Seeing the beautiful nature of Krishna Leela expanding throughout the forest, I don't want to go back to my home. I want to enter into this forest in search of the sweetness of this Krishna Leela. Bhakti Vinod is praying. When can I renounce all my family attachments and I will exclusively worship the king of Raja, Sri Krishna? So, a forest of Vrindavan is enchanting. The forest accompanied by the most beautiful river of love flowing along as the Yamuna River curves its way through the Brindavan forest and there's little ponds of lotus flowers and there is a sweet enchanting sound of the chirping of the birds. Everything gets excited and paralyzed as the sweet sounding flute emanates from the lotus lips of the supreme enchanter penetrating through the holes of the flute of love, traveling through the space and touching the hearts of all, including the stones, which become as soft as butter. The trees, the birds, the deer, the cows, the peacocks, all of them get captured within that flute song and drawn towards the supreme enchanter. But this flute song has a definitely powerful nature of traveling to the ears of all those longing for rendering loving service to the infinite Lord of love, the enchanter of all, who is Govindaji, the sweet Lord of his beloved devotees. Thus, the flute song goes right into the house of Braj and goes into the ear holes of the Brajagop. And as they are hearing this flute song, they are becoming stunned. Our Lord is calling. What am I going to do to go there? I am here with children, husbands, cooking, cleaning, arranging the family house affairs. And I am hearing this flute song coming into my heart and just like a hook it is piercing any type of external consciousness and pulling me out of my duties into the forest to meet the originator of that sweet call of love so the gopis make all the arrangements 
one, two, three, come up with some excuse, say I have to still pick some water, whatever, they go out of the door not to return so fast either. Off they go. They don't have time to arrange their clothes properly. Their hair is not necessarily very well arranged. Everything is in disorder. They can hardly walk properly. They stumble as they run along the dark path along the forest to go to that place next to the Yamuna where this enchanter is leaning on a tree in the Vang Sivata, doing as if he was just absorbed in the flute music and had nothing to do with all the effects it takes on the hearts of the afflicted souls who have simply been pierced and made slaves of the sweet flute sound. So as they come there, Krishna still playing on his flute, he is all of a sudden opening his eyes and sees him himself surrounded by Braja Gopis who are drinking up the nectar of his lotus face with their lotus petal eyes as they can simply think, my beloved Lord, I am so fortunate. Tonight I have come to see him and tonight I will be able to please him. And they see all the other Gopis there and they are so profoundly absorbed in the bliss of contemplation. Then as Krishna opens his eyes and looks at him with this naughty, prankish look of girls, what are you doing here at night? Can't you see the time? You're not supposed to be in the forest here. I'm astonished. And they look at him, yeah, yeah, you are astonished, no? Uh, I think that for the sake of morality, chastity, and good tradition, you should but now go back to your homes, wouldn't you? I don't think it will look too good for you that you simply ran away from home to come here into the forest. I may be a little bit guilty of playing flute, but anyhow, it's time you should return. The gopis look at him and says, oh, Why you say such horrible things? And they don't know what to say because he's giving such good arguments. So they are starting with the toes of their feet, they're drawing lines, pushing the, the soft sand of the Yamuna from one side to the other, and they are speechless. Then Krishna goes on, says, Really, my dear girls, I think you have risked very much of coming here. But anyhow, since you made such an effort, why don't you walk a little bit along with me along the Yamuna and we can have a nice time. So the gopis are totally infatuated by their love for Krishna. But their love is so pure. They are only there to want to please him. They want to make him happy as it has always been emphasized by our spiritual masters that the criteria of love for God is that you are not concerned with your own pleasure but you are exclusively concerned for pleasing his senses regardless what effort it may take what danger it may entail regardless for his pleasure you're ready to do anything difficult. So in this way, the gopis are ready to put their entire existence at the <coughs> lotus feet of their beloved Lord Sri Krishna, whom they have prayed to when they prayed to Goddess Katyayani to be so kind and make them wives of Sri Krishna.
They wanted to be his wives. And Katya Yani made all the arrangement. She is an external uh, aspect of the powerful potency of the Supreme Lord. And in this way she pleased the gopis that now they can dance with Krishna in this famous Rasa Stali in Seva Kunja, celebrating the most intimate sweetness of tasting the lotus lips of the Supreme Personality of Godhead because their purity knows no bounds and they are there in the innermost samadhi of their heart as the Supreme Lord is making his fun and dancing and singing and musical entertainment and everything is just the most beautiful forest of Vrindavan. Like in Sharad Purnima, we will celebrate this here, the night of our beloved uh, Radha Brajamohan coming out here and dancing with the devotees. So we hear all this qualities of the gopis we hear of this unique sweetness this unique dance which has been glorified even five thousand years later we are still in rapture when we hear about this beloved connection which is so unique but then we are hearing Bhaktivinotaku's prayer and he says with sweet songs all the gopis dance totally satisfied with Radha and Krishna because Radha and Krishna are the treasure of their life. You see the gopis they always want to make arrangements that Radha and Krishna can meet but Radha Rani she always wants to make arrangements that the gopis can meet with Krishna. So there is an incredible uh, plan to always enhance Krishna's pleasure. And Krishna enjoys how the, the gopis are always eager to make all the arrangements for the pleasure of the Supreme. He is the Parama Purusha, the Supreme Enjoyer. When we are talking of the gopis' love for Krishna, our gopis' love today is the Sankirtan love. Now don't think I'm utilizing this for any propaganda purpose. It is actually that mood of going out to convince the conditional souls that they should act to please Krishna that will make Krishna very pleased with you and will make Srimata Radharani very convinced that you are belonging to that group of surrendered servants. When you go out and you try to convince somebody about Krishna, oh, it is so nice. If they are receptive, if they are totally impersonal and agnostic and suspicious and they think Krishna wants to, uh, or not Krishna, they don't believe in Krishna, if they think you want to take advantage of them in any way, then you cannot feel anything. Then you say, hey, you're not this body. Hey, you're a spirit soul. Hey, you're going to suffer the karma of your sinful activities. That type of talking we can still do. But otherwise, we are not so inspired. But if we can tell somebody who's trying to please his senses and who is never satisfied, you say, yes, because you're not pleasing the senses of Govinda. It is your life and your business to please the senses of Govinda. Please Govinda, do for Govinda what Govinda wants to be done and tell people about that they are unhappy because they are not serving the senses of Govinda. They are trying to serve their own senses and they are never satisfied. You have tried it so many times. Who knows what did you try to please your senses? What you did for illicit activities, taking drugs, drinking alcohol, dancing late at night, trying to please your senses and all you could get in the end of it was like, Ugh, nothing, stale, frustration, I was not happy, I could not please anybody. Then you see all for a sudden that you are wasting your life. 
you're wasting your time. And then a Vaishnava comes and says, because you are not pleasing Govinda, you have to please the senses of Govinda. And how do you please the senses of Govinda? By telling others to please the senses of Govinda. My business is that your business is to please the senses of Govinda. And Govinda will be pleased by your senses when your senses tell others that their senses should also be dedicated to Govinda because we got nothing else to do. There is no other engagement. There is no movie which you have to see. There is no book you have to read. There is no visit you have to make. There's no trail to be tracked. There's no excavation to be made. There's no archaeological survey to be undertaken. There's no sociological study to be done. There's nothing to be done except serving the police to please the senses of Govinda, the Lord in everybody's heart. Everything else is waste of time. That type of activity in the human form of life which does not bring about loving attachment to the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord should be understood to be an utter waste of time. So, to please the senses of Govinda by selling books in the bookstores, by giving the people many nectar from the transcendental world or by establishing a Vaishnava academy in Mexico or by taking the songs to every town and village or by preaching through the internet or by making a preaching center in the Vaishnava forum or by taking care that all our programs are protected like Paramahansa Marsh is doing or by doing anything like that to please the senses of Govinda in Vrindavan that's why we are here if you are coming to Vrindavan to please Please, your own senses, this is not Vrindavan. You should leave immediately. You should come here to please the senses of Govinda. And don't think you can run away from Vrindavan. Because every temple is Vrindavan. Not only Vrindavan is Vrindavan. Every place where devotees live and they try to please the senses of Govinda, there is Vrindavan. So don't think, oh, Vrindavan is a heavy place. Maybe I should go somewhere else. Where? To be in Maya somewhere or to be with devotees somewhere. If you are with devotees somewhere, that's also Vrindavan. So <coughs> they have a saying in English which is pretty heavy. It says, shape up or ship out. Huh? That either you get yourself to your show together or you're going to be on the run again through the planetary system like Durvasa Muni when the Shudarshan Chakra ran after him because he had offended the Vaishnava he could not find peace anywhere everywhere the burning sensation of the Sudarshan was just scorching his back oh, he ran everywhere so you want to find peace without pleasing the senses of Govinda forget it you have to work you have to think you have to dream, you have to do everything to please the senses of Govinda because Govinda is the only one who loves at all. Govinda is the only one who is really our eternal friend. And pleasing his senses means pleasing him, pleasing his devotees. So, Sankirtan is the mood of the gopis. This Sankirtan movement is in the mood of the gopis. The gopis, they go out to recruit more people for Radharani's group. The gopis say, hey, come here, my friend. Don't you want to be part of Radharani's group? You say, what group? Yes, we are recruiting for Vrindavan. We need some more preachers. They want to come and please the senses of Govinda. No, but I want to be Govinda. Oh, you fool, get away. He wants to be Govinda, this rascal, huh? Let's find somebody more serious, no? Like that. We invite people to become members of the group of Radharani, Radha Dasyam. That is what our Acharyas have taught us, right? So we have to be very careful. We want to accomplish that. That's not a joke. Krishna consciousness is not a joke. It is a full commitment. It is a full task. So wonderful task to do something for our beloved Lord Sri Krishna. This is very, very important task. Now, my spiritual master Srila Prabhupada, he 
taught us from the very beginning that this is the movement of Radha and Krishna and that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna and that Nityananda is the original spiritual master and that he gave everybody the mercy to come to the lotus feet of Lord Goranga and he went to knock at every door in every corner in the world and told everybody even Jagai Madai to start chanting and Jagai Madai by accepting the lotus feet of Lord Nityananda were even purified from the offense of having beaten Lord Nityananda and they were getting the mercy by the mercy of a devotee. And that principle being applied is the principle, the living alive principle of this Krishna conscious movement. Because somehow other we also came here and we didn't come exactly from the saintly circle of philosopher, uh, philosophical uh, students or pure hearted souls. No, We came from the dark dungeon of Kali Yuga, crazy for sense gratification, running here and there, trying anything to please ourselves. And when somebody told us, please Krishna, we said, who's Krishna? We don't know him. We only know the mirror and looking at our face and thinking about what this guy wants to have enjoyment today. Oh, eating, sleeping, mating, defending, anything but enjoy, enjoy, enjoy your life. At least enjoy a gulab jamam which is not offered to Krishna. Let's enjoy some boga. Like in India, uh, it is a little bit uh, tr more traditional, so you don't have so much illicit sex life. You don't have so, uh, drugs, you also have. People are taking bang everywhere and they're, they're trying to enjoy, and, and the others go and they drink their stupid whiskey and things like that. I mean, foolish things are there everywhere. You don't have to go out of India to find foolish things, you know. They are right here also. What about speculation and what about wanting to become God? Hmm. Everybody wants to become God. This is not, you don't have to go to the West for that either, no? As a matter of fact, Srila Prabhupada said, India is exporting a new incarnation every week. Huh? Everybody wants to be incarnation. Like in the West, there is one yoga group there started now, Avatar Course. You can take a course of six months to become an avatar. Now, what do you think about that? Wouldn't that be exciting? Become an avatar with certificate, of course, no? You absorbed successfully the avatar course and now you are a bogey yogi avatar eh? or something like that. So cheating is going on everywhere, but who <coughs> is ready <coughs> to please the senses of Govinda? That is the real question we have here. Now, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, When I see the beautiful nature of Krishna Leela expanding throughout the forest, I don't want to go back to my home. Uh, I don't want to. I want to go into this forest and I want to find the sweetness of this Krishna Leela. So, in one way or another, we have come to this forest in Vindavan and sometimes you may think, maybe I should go back to Vienna and get a job. Uh, or I see, maybe I should go to Colombia and study in a university of Medellin, uh, or maybe I should go and become security agent in Miami, uh, or maybe I should go and uh, uh, and have hip hop dance in the discotheque of Mexico, uh, or maybe I should go to Manipur and see if I get a no new job in in something, no? or maybe I should open a big shop for my own and uh, have a big family. Like everybody may have some ideas what he could do. There's so many types of ideas. But the fact is that this is not the pleasure of Govinda. Govinda is not looking that you do all that nonsense. That is not, you, you, there is no home waiting for you. There is no home. Those so called homes, that's where people fighting, that's where people are frustrated, that's where people want money, 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 and all thousands of other things. That's where people spend all day watching television and don't even talk to each other. Uh, people are sitting there, they haven't, like one person told me, she, vi she went to visit her home and in the home television was running. Even after they hadn't seen in 10 years, there was no solid conversation because everyone was sitting in there and the television was going there. Oh, why did you leave me, you stupid fool? I wanted to, that you love me. And then everybody looking like, this. oh, how are you? So nice to see you. Look at this novella we are looking here. No, 
and back they are on the novella. There's no relationship in this world, no? Everybody is taking duo darshan, but not real darshan. No nam darshan, no, no takurji darshan, no sadhu sangha darshan, only duo darshan. So in this way, they're wasting their life away. If we are, that is the home you want to go back to? No, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, forget it. I don't want to go back to that so-called home. If anything I want at home, I send a letter to home. Come to the forest of Vindavan, you beloved fools. Huh? You're wasting your time there, drinking, sleeping, nonsense. Come to Vindavan, go to the temple, chant Hare Krishna. And then they say, oh, she became a fanatic. Huh? They must have washed her brain or his brain that he's only telling us we should give up our beautiful television set. Huh? We should give up our beautiful whiskey bar. We should give up our, our beautiful uh, uh, palais de, of enjoyment no? where we are king sometimes no? mm? until somebody comes and kicks you out no? from your kingdom. Mm? Latest death comes and kicks you out. But usually people get kicked out before death comes. Uh, it's just the way nature is. You get and then you lose. You get and then you lose. So in this way, my dear friends, follow the footsteps of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. This is the call to Vindavan. And some or other, you know, I don't know how. How we are sitting in the forest in Vindavan. This is the Kadamba tree. This is the Tamal tree. Tulasi is everywhere. Vrindavan. Vrindakunja is Vrindavan. That's why I dared in that song to call it El Umbral del Baile de Rasa. Well, because Gopeshwar Mahatev is on the door. So after his, it is the, uh, the Umbral means the door. The door to the Rasa tents. No? So Vrindakunja is actually Vrindavan. And in Sarat Purnima, we have personal uh, chance to witness the dancing of the Supreme Lord here in the forests of Vrindadevi. It is very sweet, very nice, very kind, but we have to be serious. That is also a fact. Be serious. Be serious anywhere you go. Be serious anything you do. If you want to be serious, your life will be most fortunate. If you are not serious, well, then you have to go and experience all the nonsense you still want to experience for not being serious. I mean, we have seen that, and s sincerely speaking, uh, it is so important to be serious about Krishna. And we hope the best for our beloved devotees, that they all get the blessings of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. That we all get the blessings of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. That is my uh, humble request to all of you. Jai Sri Krishna, Jai Srila Prabhupada, Jai Vaishnavas, Jai Vindavan Dam, the forest of Vindavan, Gopeshwa Mahadev, Vrinda Devi, Bangsi uh, Vata, Dira Samira Ki Jai, Gauda Premananda Hari Bol, Sri Harinam Sankirtan Yagya Ki Jai.